National Board Certification is an advanced teaching credential achieved upon successful completion of a voluntary assessment program. The program recognizes effective and accomplished teachers who meet high standards based on what teachers should know and be able to do to advance student learning and achievement. As part of the process, teachers analyze and reflect upon their teaching context and student needs, submit videos of their teaching, and provide student work samples that demonstrate growth and achievement. MCPS currently employs 30 National Board certified teachers. We have two teachers being recognized this year for achieving certification by the National Board for Professional Teaching Standards. The first will be recognized this evening and the second at the March 17th board meeting. This evening, I'd like to bring up Jennifer McLaughlin. Jennifer is a fourth grade teacher at Auburn Elementary School. She received her master's in reading from Radford University in 2007. Jennifer is a product of Montgomery County Public Schools, having graduated from Christiansburg High School in 1994. She is in her 16th year of teaching at Auburn Elementary and coached girls basketball at Auburn High School for nine years. She's extremely grateful for the support she received from her colleagues and family as she has grown over time as an educator. Jennifer earned her National Board certification in the area of Middle Childhood Generalist. Thank you. And they have things for you, goodies. I do believe I see some cheerleaders. If you would like to stand for Ms. McLaughlin as well. Uh, that's great. <laughs> Our director of secondary education will present the seniors of the month. Jennifer Weaver will come forward. Good evening. We have um, some things to reschedule due to a lot of activities taking place tonight. So I'll just run through all the people that are here for you before they come up. Um, Auburn High School, January and February Senior of the Month, we're not able to come tonight, so they'll be here next month. Um, Amanda Widener is here from Blacksburg High School to present their Senior of the Month. Dr. Sears is here from Christiansburg, and Mike Stanley, Assistant Principal at Eastern Montgomery High School, is here. So first, I'd like to introduce Ms. Widener. Good evening, it's a pleasure for me to be here tonight to present the Blacksburg High School Senior of the Month. That student is Emily Beatty. She is here tonight with her parents, Reinhardt and Cindy Beatty, and her younger sister, Julia. And at this time, I'd like to ask all of them to come forward. <coughs> The following comments come from the Blacksburg High School Health and PE Department. Everyone who knows Emily loves her. Not only is she an outstanding track athlete, she has a great personality, a fantastic work ethic, and a positive attitude. She also serves as a positive role model to our younger students and athletes. Emily has signed to run track and cross country for Virginia Tech and plans to major in human nutrition foods and exercise. We are proud to honor Aunt Emily as our February Senior of the Month. Congratulations. Ms. Blackburn, Mr. Lyons, members of the board, 
It is with great pride that I introduce to you Christiansburg High School's February Senior of the Month, Carolyn Garvey. She is accompanied this evening by her parents, Sean and Carol Garvey, and I ask that they come forward at this time to be recognized. Kara was selected as our February 2015 Senior of the Month for her positive attitude, incredible work ethic, vast academic achievements, and most importantly, her infectious love of learning. As we enter the final stretch of high school for the class of 2015, Kara finds herself in a three-way tie at the top. While all three students have worked extremely hard and should be proud of their accomplishments, Kara's motivation in getting there has been a little different and certainly noteworthy. Kara is at the top of her class because she absolutely, unequivocally loves to learn, loves the classroom atmosphere, and impacts her courses in such a way that those around her become better students. Linda Martin, an AP Social Studies teacher, had the following to say about Kara. Kara Garvey is one of the most impressive students I've had the pleasure to teach in my past 19 years. She finished AP US History with the highest grade in class, currently has the highest grade in AP government, she has taken the lead with numerous volunteer projects and other students look up to her. And she is always like a breath of fresh air with a smile and a positive attitude. There is an exciting life waiting ahead for Ms. Kara Garvey and we at CHS are very proud to have played a small part in it. Kara Garvey. Good evening, members of the board. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Kalisa Rose Leonard, Eastern Montgomery High School Senior of the Month. <coughs> EMHS business teacher Karen Carrier had this to say about Kalisa. There are very few students that I have taught that have Kalisa's maturity, intelligence, and ambition. She is a quick learner and has shown a great ability to help others in the classroom and in our community. Her work is always above average, showing her ability and her willingness to accomplish any task at hand. She completes tasks efficiently and accurately and helps others when there is remaining time. She also holds a part-time job at Burger King, has volunteered as an EMT on our rescue squad, and is involved in many clubs. She shows great school spirit as a cheerleader for our varsity basketball and football teams. She stands above her peers because of her maturity and her drive to succeed. She is accompanied tonight by her mother, Nancy, and her two sisters, EMHS's Student of the Month, Kalisa Rose Leonard. So tonight I have an opportunity to thank you, the members of the Montgomery County School Board, for your dedication to our schools, to our students, to our community, for the long hours and the tremendous service that you give to this community. We don't say it often enough, but we make it a special point to say it in February. So each February we recognize the contributions of the school board to our division's success as we celebrate School Board Appreciation Month. This year's theme, I think, is very um, indicative of the work of this board. It's a focus on student-focused leadership. This reflects that you place students as the top priority when you advocate for public education at the local, at the state, and at the federal level. 
Each of you this evening received a small token of our appreciation at your seat on the dais. I think you should show us what you got. <laughs> a Montgomery County Public Schools coffee mug, and if you're a tea drinker, it works for tea as well. And we have certificates for each of you. Included in the certificates are the VSBA Academy certifications for 2014. As you know, these certifications recognize your commitment to becoming a further educated uh, person in boardsmanship skills and curriculum issues through your attendance at Academy programs. Board members can receive five levels of award depending on their involvement. So I'm gonna ask you if you would come down and join me on the uh, floor here as I call your name and your level of recognition. I'd like to start out this evening, first of all, with um, an award of recognition for Gunan Karan. Gunan, if you'd come down and join me. I'm gonna hang on to the certificates till I get all of you down here. And we have three of our members who have earned the Award of Achievement this evening. Jamie Bond, Joe Ivers, and Sarah Woolsey. Also Award of Excellent, and she's unable to be with us this evening, Ms. Penny Franklin. I'd like to also tonight present certificates of recognition to our newest board member, Marty Graham, and to our board chair, Joey Lyons. Our next recognition is the board clerk, uh, recognition of the board clerk, <laughs> and Mr. Lyons will present that. Mr. Rake, would you please join me here at the podium? <laughs> um, for those members of the audience who don't know this, you guys have no idea how much we rely upon Ms. Drake. And tonight we want to recognize you as our board clerk. Thank you for all of your endless hours of dedication, not only to us, the seven of us who sometimes can be demanding, but also to Ms. Blackburn and to the rest of the school division. Thank you so much for all that you do. As you saw, she makes the technology work. Thank you, Brenda. Everything work. <laughs> and our last presentation is uh, for the departing deputy clerk. I'm, I'm so sorry, Lois. I did not think to tell you. The person who's going to be recognized is ill this evening, and so we will reschedule that recognition. I'm okay. so sorry. Thank you. And with that, we will take a 10-minute break so that the board members may um, congratulate those in the audience that were recognized tonight. So we will take a 10-minute break decide up to 30 minutes for the public to address the board on in areas of education each citizen or organization is allowed up to three minutes to speak uh, you will be warned of the time that you have left by the screens in front of you and to the sides um, at this point we have three people who are signed up to uh, to speak as I call your name please Come up to the podium, state your name and your address, and then you, your three minutes will begin. First is Andrea Muscatello. Good evening. I'm Andrea Muscatello, 2802 Shadow Lake Road in Blacksburg. I am speaking to you in my capacity as PTSO president of Blacksburg High School. For the past several months, we have been lobbying Superintendent Blackburn to allow our students the option of electing a structured study hall, not a free social hour, uh, in lieu of taking a full A class schedule. I have also discussed this needed change 
with our Blacksburg School Board representatives. My time limit for public address is not sufficient to provide you with a complete historical perspective of this issue. Fast forward to where we are today, Blacksburg High School, like each high school in our county, is comprised of the diverse student population. Our students vary in their learning methods, academic achievement, priorities in and out of school, home environment, and in many other ways. When the parents and students requested the ability of taking an eight class schedule, it was always believed that it would be an option, not a requirement. As you can expect, one size does not fit all students. While over 50% of the student body wants the opportunity to take eight classes, the remaining students have varying needs that can prevent them from benefiting from a full eight class schedule. Again, due to time limits, you will have to rely on previous communications for the list of benefits to students for having the option of a structured study hall. How much additional budget would be required to have structured study halls? Nothing. As you navigate through the budget season, consider your credibility. You have the opportunity to make a significant enhancement to the education of a large block of students at Blacksburg High School at no cost, with no additional tax dollars. We also don't believe that there will be an excess of empty, class, empty seats in the classrooms. The students that are currently office and guidance aides or coming or leaving, coming in late or leaving early, make a significant population of the students that would benefit from a structured study hall. To our elected representatives, we ask what is in the best interest of our students? We elected you to represent our interests. We have entrusted you to spend our tax dollars wisely. We have entrusted you to ensure that our education system is the best it can be subject to your constraints. It is your responsibility to make certain that you are representing the interest of your constituents. And what does the new motto of MCPS, engage, empower, encourage, really mean without action? Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Robbie Jones. Hello, my name is Robbie Jones. I live at 996 Cole Hall Road, Christiansburg, Virginia. I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this evening. I am the president of the Montgomery County Education Association. I come here today to tell you about a campaign that deserves your support. It is a campaign that aims to raise our children and youth and provide them with the opportunity to realize their dreams and become Virginia's next generation of leaders. Think about the last time you visited a kindergarten classroom. When you looked into the faces of kindergarten students, you see the smiling eyes and the eagerness to learn that underscore the promise of that child. They have dreams about what they will become and their hopes burn bright. I will do everything I can to help that child realize his or her dream, but as a society, we are not doing nearly enough. Virginia ranks 10th as the 10th wealthiest state in the country, but we are a low 39th among all states in per pupil state funding. Since the Great Recession, the state has cut its education funding by 17% and we have, we've had 50, no, I'm sorry, 5,000 educational job cuts. Even through student enrollment, even though student enrollments have gone up, MCPS alone has lost 89 positions. What happens when education funding falls short? Kids get shortchanged. Class sizes go up. Valuable programs and electives are cut. School facilities and equipment begin to fall apart. We can't allow this to go on. And that's why the Virginia Education Association and the Virginia Parent Teacher Association have joined together for a campaign called Put Kids First. We believe that the Commonwealth has the capacity and the knowledge to truly transform the lives of our children and ensure that every single child has access to a high quality public education from preschool to graduation. What's stopping us? We know how substantially 
how to substantially improve the lives of Virginia's children, but our decision makers have not shown the will to make it happen. We have not demanded enough from our elected leaders or from ourselves. That must change. If we invest now in the education of Virginia students, we will help every child reach his or her full potential. We will increase the number of graduates ready to begin high school careers in Virginia's new economy. We will reduce the human and financial cost associated with school failure and dropouts. Aren't those goals worth fighting for? And we need to put an end to the excuses. Your time is up. I'm sorry. Thank Ms. you. Jones. Thank you. Next on the list is Connie Froggett. Thank you, Mr. Lyons. My name is Connie Froggett, and I live at 1751 Brush Mountain Creek Road, and I'm speaking tonight as the Blacksburg High School AP exam coordinator. The article I just handed you is from 2011, when Fairfax County Public Schools completed their plan for implementing a study hall option in their school AB block schedule. Fairfax County was one of the models studied last year when the block schedule was proposed for MCPS high schools and is currently one of the key models presented by Ms. Blackburn for justifying the school start time changes. Why then shouldn't Fairfax County also be the model for implementing a study hall option in Blacksburg High School? The article discusses all the same benefits of a structured study hall as presented by the BHS administration and echoed by many BHS parents, students, teachers, and coaches. Extra time during the day for students who need remediation, extra time for AP students with highly demanding schedules, the chance to do homework for athletes and other, others with after school activities or jobs, time to work on group projects while everyone is at school, the chance to meet with a teacher for kids who can't stay after school, and the reasons go on and on. It also discusses the concerns, whether that time might be wasted. With over 200 student aides alone at Blacksburg High School who spend most of that time hanging out, listening to music, or delivering notes, clearly they are already wasting their time. A structured study hall would be infinitely better than the current situation. The key to making it successful is in the implementation, and I have no doubt that the BHS administrators will ensure that the study hall periods provide a solid academic experience for every student, if only they are given the chance. Not every student wants or needs to take eight classes, but those who do should have the option. That argument was the basis for establishing an eight-period A-B block schedule at BHS this year, which allowed students the opportunity to take eight classes and still have a full lunch period. But it's not for everyone. Shouldn't every student have the ability to choose the option that works best for them, whether it be seven classes or eight? That option should not be limited to certain students. It should be available to all, and it should provide a structured environment where remediation, homework assistance, group study, access to computer resources, or other academic pursuits can take place. As you consider the school start time change proposal, I think it is absolutely necessary for you to also consider a study hall option. We know the later start time will create issues for athletes, kids who work after school, kids with after school activities, and kids who need remediation but don't have after school <laughs> transportation. A structured study hall supervised by a teacher is a much better alternative than the current options. I hope you give our students that option. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Ms. Fraga was the last on the list. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address the board who has not signed up? Seeing no one, public address is now closed. Next on the agenda is consent items. Board members, if there is no objections, we will assume that the consent items are approved. You see the field trips, donation, the minutes from some of the meetings in 2013. Anyone have any questions? Very good. Next up is the- I'm sorry, I, yeah, I did. Um, there was a donation in there for $15,000. Um, my question is, if a, if a citizen wants to donate to a school such as this, can they also indicate what that donation is, is gonna go for specifically? 
Like I recall this was for special, uh, education. special education department right. to assist students with cerebral palsy. Right, right. And that's appropriate. Yes, it is appropriate. If we don't want to do that, we need to reject the donation. Okay. So well, that's so why I'm I, here for well, you. Well, my question is anybody can make a request similar to this for art or whatever. Subject to the board's approval. Yeah, okay, thank you. That's all I need. Any other questions, board members? Very good. Consent items are approved. Moving on to the personnel report. Do I have a motion to accept the personnel report as presented? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Personnel report is approved. Next on the agenda is our financial report, paying the bills. Do I have a motion to pay the bills? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Very good. Financial summary report. Do I have a motion to accept the financial summary report as presented? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Financial summary report is approved. I now turn it over to Mrs. Blackburn for her reports, recommendations, and announcements. Thank you, Mr. Lyons. My first item this evening is a special education advisory committee appointments. This evening we are recommending the addition of two people to the special education advisory council. Vacancies have occurred and Dr. Julie Ligon and Mr. Taylor have indicated an interest in serving on the committee. And these two appointments are recommended this evening for your approval. I'm not sure if either Mr. Taylor or Ms. Ligon are in the audience, no? Okay. So presented this evening for your approval. Board members, do I have a motion to approve these appointments? So moved. Second. Any discussion? How, how do they get to this point of being approved? We have been uh, soliciting interest both by email, through notices at the school for interested uh, parents, and these folks have come forward and been reviewed by um, both uh, Dr. Nelson and the uh, sitting members of the uh, committee. I think I read that. Thank you. And, and do we have a, is that set up to be like we have a certain, member of, a certain amount of community members, certain amount of staff? Pat, would you like to address the composition of the committee? <coughs> you need to come to the podium though. Thank you. The CF committee has um, bylaws by which they establish Use the, the committee and um, who and how and um, to go about becoming a part of that committee and it's an application process and then it's a re reviewed and it's a quorum that makes that decision to invite them and accept them in. Um, and so yes, in the um, bylaws it talks about a composition of a percentage of students, of families, um, with students who have a disability and it has to be diverse so it can't be um, all parents of one particular um, disability group. There'll be, um, I sit on that every month as well, but I'm only there for guidance or questions, but we're allowed one member to be there and that's where Dr. Julie Lugan will be representing um, the school division at the mm -hmm. committee. So um, it is, it's very clear on the composition of who should be part of that committee. How many members are on the committee? Um, currently, I think we're still looking for one more member. Okay. Um, we did have two more applicants, but we didn't have a quorum to vote on them. Okay. So we have to wait until the next meeting to see if we could vote. So we are looking for at least one more member. Which, which is a total of how many? Um, I think, if I remember correctly, I think we said that there could be about eight, up to eight. We didn't want more than that. Okay. Mm -hmm. but is, is there an assumption that all these members have children in the program? No, they Good. do not have to Good. be all parents. So with Chris Taylor, he's a community representative, so he um, has a business Good. in the community. He's okay. part of a business community. Okay. So it is open to uh, multiple different types of folks to be part of that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further questions or discussion, board members? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Approved. Thank you. My next item this evening is our instructional update for the board. And tonight we're very fortunate that we have Judy Borelski, who's the lead curriculum supervisor, 
and Tammy Huff, a secondary literacy coach. And Judy and Tammy are going to share with you a little bit about what we're doing with the writing materials and the technology enhancements that the board approved the purchase of as a part of our carryover plan this year. So, Judy, okay. welcome. And Thank you. Tammy, Thank you. welcome. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Blackburn. Uh, this year, our middle school English teachers have been investigating how to use our new online writing coach and the laptop computers to increase the time students are engaged in writing, to provide encouragement through feedback during the writing process, and to empower students to be active participants in their own learning. Tonight, Tammy Huff and I will present with you, to you some examples from classroom experiences to support the two parts of the middle school writing SOL test. Uh, as you can see from this blueprint, there are two primary pieces to the blueprint and to the assessment. One is the multiple choice technology enhanced component. It's worth 24 points. Technology enhanced items are kind of like multiple choice, but not quite. You have to use a different strategy. You have to click and drag items. Sometimes you have to identify multiple pieces of information in order for an item to be correct. So this is a very, this is the enhancement through the technology of the new items. The other part, the other half of the test is the short paper. It too is worth 24 points. Both of these, or each of these parts of the test is untimed and they're delivered on different days because they're both demanding. You can see that of the total 20, uh, 48 points, Students need 32 points to pass the SOL test. And you can look at the research composing part and see that most of those points come from the short paper, whereas the editing feature, most of those points come from the multiple choice technology enhanced items. What I'd like to do with you now is share a piece of instruction uh, from Alyssa Grantham, seventh grade teacher at Shawsville Middle School. She's not here tonight, but you'll see she'll be joining us in this presentation. Uh, she was concerned uh, it, to find ways to help her students expand their vocabulary in writing and elaborate their sentences. So she took advantage of a well-known Shawsville scene. A house not even 100 yards from the school provided a fun answer. The front yard of this house and his neighbors are full of fun holiday inflatables. How could I not use this in some way? We took a walking field trip where each student chose one inflatable to describe. They used their phones to take pictures and from all angles and take notes. The student's goal was to stump the reader. Using laptops from our portable laptop cart and their phones, each student created a slide with a picture and three to four simple sentences to describe their inflatable. Now the fun began. Using online dictionaries and thesauruses, students began to find new words to replace the bland, boring ones they'd used in their original sentences. I've rarely seen such excitement when writing. They were constantly calling me over to show me some crazy word they had just found and they loved sharing their words with their classmates. Here are some of them. They were creating amazingly elaborate sentences and felt very successful in knowing what the hard words meant. They shared their slide with me via our Google Drive and I created a class slideshow. We made it a guessing game. The kids ran the discussion with statements like, oh, I almost used that word in my sentence, or, I don't know what the word means, but I found this context clue. Alyssa's provided a student example for you to try. Read the description and conjure the image. Then I'll give you some picture choices. Picture A, picture B, or picture C? <laughs> of course, it's C. The purified bleach bear is a dead giveaway. <laughs> Another way students collaborate uh, through the use of technology is in Ms. Kitt's class. She's developed a supportive classroom where students post to Today's Meet, 
a safe site chat platform. Students simultaneously submit their responses to the posted task, read the post of, other, of peers, and provide each other feedback. Students also receive feedback, immediate feedback, when working independently on grammar exercises within the online writing coach. Teachers focus students uh, within one of the grammar modules to the right. Students then take a pretest, are assigned a curriculum that includes video explanations and exercises at, to meet their individual needs. This differentiated practice motivates students because they can immediately see what they understand and where they need to continue working. Increased computers has also made it possible to schedule more time for students to work in the test nav online environment, and that's the environment used by the state to deliver the multiple choice technology enhanced components of the writing test. Here you see some practicing sample SOL test items. Tammy now has another classroom example to share. This is a project in which eighth grade students in Mrs. Smith's class were asked to create a no smoking campaign. The project places students in a lifelike workforce situation where they're asked to work in collaborative groups to research information and create a final presentation. As you watch this video, or the following video, notice how these students are taking on the role of an advertisement campaign and are engaged in 21st century work. This video is about a minute and a half, and you may not be able to hear everything that the students are saying, but pay close attention to their computer screens. Okay, um, I know I was Is anybody done with the thing that they were doing? I'm just switching over to We're using several 21st century skills that I'd like to highlight. Did you notice that the project manager kept the group focused, organized, and engaged? The students paid attention to a target audience while collecting their information. As students were researching individual pieces of the topic, they were working with one another to understand new concepts and terms. The first group of students were working in a shared Google Drive document to collect research information. As they found a piece of information they wanted to keep, they posted the information into a shared document that was viewable by the others in the group. And finally, the second group of students were using a shared Google Drive presentation tool as they began creating their slide presentation. In writing workshops, our students are developing their composing skills and getting feedback from their peers, the teacher, and the Writing Coach program. The Writing Coach provides a writing interface very similar to the online resource that students will use when they write their short paper. Students get feedback one paragraph at a time, unlike on the SOL test. 
Initial feedback shows that students uh, show students where their paper stands in reference to six traits of writing. You can see that the black arrow indicates where the paper is along a continuum of red to green. Then students click an area, like organization, and the computer provides targeted feedback. Feedback here suggests developing the introduction and conclusion and varying the transition words. Here's another example uh, where voice is the trait. The students are being prompted to check vague adjectives, repeated words, and the noun and antecedents, pronouns and antecedents. When he clicks the arrow to the right of the pronoun antecedents, he gets a reminder about the grammar point and a prompt to check the highlighted pronouns. This example is very common uh, among our middle school writers. By clicking the grammar needs work arrow, writing coach draws attention to the student's on and on sentences. So he can revise and find appropriate places to break the thought into focused sentences. Students have found this immediate feedback, places um, have found this immediate feedback very motivating. They can fix their writing, resubmit their draft, and see an improved score. In her classroom, Ms. Dicker has her students write in Google Docs. During the writing process, students invite her to provide feedback. Here you have an example of her feedback through the dialog box and the highlighting. She's prompting the students to vary sentence beginnings. Ms. Kitts also uses shared Google Docs, but instead of using the dialog box, she writes directly on the student's paper in a different color. Teachers and students are fans of immediate feedback. For students, it occurs at a time, in a timely fashion, and when it's needed. At this point, students don't think their papers are finished, and they're open to using the comments to make revisions. And revising on a computer is so much easier than revising by hand. We'll end our classroom examples with three six-word memoirs. Unlike our first vocabulary example, where students were elaborating sentences, in the six-word memoir, students are required to find just the right six words to give their audience an understanding of who they are. Here are three illustrated six-word memoirs from Miss Sims' class. I think it's clear that as teachers have been investigating how to use our new resources, they have used writing to engage, encourage, and empower their students. Any questions? Question. Is this <clears throat> software being used at all middle schools or just some? The software is available at all middle schools. And uh, teachers have figured out a way to use the rotation of our laptop carts and use those in various ways. Some are using it more heavily for the grammar component. Some are using it more heavily for the online writing component. But it's available in all, for all students. But they may not be all using it. That's right. <laughs> this is our year to uh, explore and to investigate. And then as on that first slide that I showed, we're, going, we're coming together periodically and talking about what we're doing. And then we'll be setting some um, shared understandings at the end of this year for what makes good sense, good practice for next year. Okay. And would you tell us just a little bit about the professional development that you've done with the teachers to this point, just so we know what kind of things they've been exposed to? Okay, so we have met um, three times, I think, uh, and we've looked not only at writing, but one of the things we did very early on was explore the writing component, this uh, uh, writer, writing coach, because it was new to all of them. Um, technology worked very closely with us, and we appreciate that very much, because they uploaded all of the students into the software. It's very easy for students to access their account. It's very easy for teachers to um, assign assignments through that account. And so we, uh, technology has done training on that technology side of getting the students and uh, making assignments, and then in joint department meetings, Teachers have done, we've worked together with the writing component. 
and we had them do a writing sample, print their papers, then, I, I'm an old English teacher, so I don't think any computer can score that paper as well as I can. So we had them bring papers, and they scored the papers to the rubric, and they looked also at what the state or what the computer had scored. And really, they were very, very close. That's what I was going to ask you: if English yeah. teachers think that they can. Well, we all do, but then the plus side of it is, students can do so much of the. Um, editing and revising before they print the paper for you to read and and it's not that they're just working on their own the teachers are circulating and helping them as well but um, students have much more ownership they can see that the paper is better than it was before when I taught writing I just didn't I accepted a paper but I didn't grade put a grade on a paper unless I could put a B or an A on it so they kept revising and revising and revising. This way, the computer helps out with some of that. Also, if you're not aware, this year, for the first time, the short paper will be scored by one human being and the computer. This is the first time. I'm anticipating in five years, it'll be just the computer. Are these apps scalable for high school? We are in the process of adopting resources for high school this year, reviewing them. And so we'll bring to you what the high school has looked at this year. Hmm. Yes, they are. And the idea is for this to be used for in 6th, 7th, and 8th? Yes, 6th, 7th, and 8th. All <clears throat> students have licenses. And then what's worked out is that some schools, a, a teacher has the laptop cart one week out of three, or in some schools they do it two days out of six but they managed to rotate the laptop carts. So you just walked into my question. <laughs> OK. Thank you. So these youngsters in the eighth grade who are doing this project, and it's more of a pilot, I would say. Well, this is our first year. Yeah. Right, it's yeah. our first year. Yeah. Yeah. And you're ironing out the bugs. Mm -hmm. So those students will move into the ninth grade, and it sounds to me like the ready-made situation they run into would be the e-backpack program. They and this would be a ready-made program mm -hmm. that's already been piloted. The 10th graders would have theirs. Mm -hmm. Incoming 9th graders in all schools would have theirs. And you could continue this with them? Yes, yes. I mean, it will take buying additional resources, but yes, we can continue it. That's the 21st century. It's yes. about time. Yes, yes. I mean, what the teachers are doing, even when they're not working in the writing coach, when they're working in shared Google Docs, that's not anything our teachers were doing last year because they didn't have laptops for kids to do that with. You're, you're saying they have access two to three times a week. No. Well, Every day they've got to have it, which will be the e-backpack next right. year in the ninth grade. That's ninth wonderful. Grade. That's wonderful. Yeah, we're pretty proud of it. Thank you. Uh, I have one other question. Do they have access to this? Like if they go home, mm -hmm. do they have their own access that they can right. still work on this at home? Right. Okay. Both Google and the the uh, the um, writing coach. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, Judy. Thank you, Tammy. That's great. Our next item this evening is a budget planning update, and I'm just going to share a little bit. As you know, the legislative session is coming to an end, and the details continue to. Uh, be provided but slowly and we don't have the whole picture yet but this is what I know right now um, you've heard the 1.5 percent information regarding raises for SOQ teachers and support staff however the preliminary total financial impact for Montgomery County Public Schools is just over a $400,000 net increase in our state budgeted funds the change came through salary adjustment funds, the additional decrease in VRS, employer rate, moving expenses from one function to another. For example, they moved textbook money to lottery uh, as an expenditure line. So it's the moving target game again. You move something from here, <coughs> put it over there. But net increase in our bottom line for state money is right at $405,000. And that's the Senate version. The House version has us about $50,000, probably less than that. 
So we're still watching that and waiting for that uh, committee um, agreement on which way we're going. Compensation money is targeted, as I indicated, for SOQ instruction and support positions. The state is allocating the money for 11 months. And you know, generally we plan our salary schedule on the basis of 12 months. Divisions must match the state money based on your composite index. Montgomery County Public Schools has taken the position in the past that increases in compensation should go to all employees and not just to the SOQ state funded positions. If you don't give raises, you don't get the money. So in other words, if you decide not to do compensation improvements, then that $400,000 will remain at the state. You will recall that our current budget proposal includes a two-step improvement in compensation, one makeup step and one new step. The cost to do that is $2.1 million. So if you take $400,000 off of that, you know that we have, would more than meet the required uh, local match. The state legislature is expected to adjourn on February 28th. The county will present their budget on March the 9th. Based on preliminary information from Richmond, uh, it appears that localities may not have to return an estimated $30 million. So that could mean that Montgomery County Board of Supervisors has about $160,000 more than they had originally anticipated. We were not able to confirm that with them today. We, uh, they were involved in some other things, but that's our interpretation of what we've received um, from various organizations at this point. Key dates to remember, the advertised tax rate will be set by the Board of Supervisors on March the 23rd for public hearing on April the 9th. No tax higher than the advertised tax rate can be imposed. The final budget, including the establishment of a tax rate, will be on April the 20th. In the meantime, my staff and I will continue to keep you informed of developments. And you know, we're constantly getting emails from both the uh, VSBA and from Virginia Association of School Superintendents updating us on what's happening with the legislative session. Any questions? Yes. Um, I haven't been in town, so I don't know the outcome, but I know the Tebow bill was, was hot on the table, and I believe the Senate and the, the delegates passed it. Did that get signed off by the governor? And if so, what effect is that going to have on us? It has not been signed off by the governor yet. I believe that I either gave you tonight or I'm going to put in your board update a letter from the craft the person who crafted the bill. Bottom line, the way the bill stands right now, it becomes a local decision. The school board may decide to allow homeschool participation, or you may choose not to allow homeschool okay. participation. Okay. So it would come back to you to make a local decision. That's where it is right now. Thank you. Any other questions, board members? Thank you, Ms. Blackburn. Next item is a school board committee appointment. And as we now have a full complement of board members, the board chair expressed a desire for consideration of Ms. Graham's appointment to the insurance committee. Mr. Lyons was initially appointed to the committee while the board was composed of six members. Since he was appointed by the board, the change in appointments requires the board's approval. Presented this evening, hopefully for your action. Do I have a motion to accept this action? So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Is Ms. Graham okay with this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're okay with it? Yes. Very good. <laughs> That's officially been. All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 A big aye from me. Those opposed? All right. Welcome to the insurance committee. <laughs> Next item is the Chantel easement at Kipps Elementary School. Chantel has requested a 10 foot wide easement 
for an underground cable along a portion of the edge of Kipps Elementary and Blacksburg Middle High School properties. It goes right across the front line. The requested e easement documents have been attached to your agenda. They have been reviewed both by the county, by our attorney, and are presented this evening for your approval. As an added bonus, Chantel has agreed to provide 150 megabytes per second of internet service to the Montgomery County Public Schools intranet via Blacksburg Middle School as consideration for this easement for the duration of the easement. So all schools would have the benefit of this additional internet service. Oh. The easement causes no problem for our facilities, either current or in the future, and it's recommended this evening for your approval. So moved. Second. Any discussion? So is this, with them providing this, does it say how much money does it actually save us? It doesn't really save us any money. It gives us some additional speed. Okay. Any other discussion, questions? All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Easement is approved. Next item is our regularly scheduled facilities update and Mr. Bernardo will be doing that presentation. As Dan's coming up to the podium, I would like to take this opportunity to commend Dan, our maintenance and facilities employees, and our custodians for the amazing job that they've done during the recent outbreak of snow and cold weather. I know we have Robbie Jones in the audience this evening, and I got a call from Dan at 4.02 a.m., and <laughs> Robbie had to be there before that because she responded to the uh, fire department when the sprinklers set off the fire alarm at uh, Christiansburg Middle School. I mean, they've done an amazing, amazing job. Our schools were ready to receive kids on Thursday. So if VDOT had just cooperated and gotten the roads ready, we would have been in school. But I can't say enough about the above and beyond efforts uh, of our staff in getting uh, our buildings warm and operational and our sidewalks and our parking areas safe for pedestrians and for vehicles. My compliments. Thank you, Ms. Blackburn. Good evening. And I'll pass that on to the people that did Please. the work. And Robbie, you know, I hope you got a little rest the next day. <laughs> uh, some updates. The updates were in bold. Uh, the, the roof projects uh, at Shaws of Middle and Gilbert Linkus, we did receive uh, three bids last week, and we're in analysis now with the roof engineer and our facilities and procurement staff. Uh, one thing I don't think I had mentioned before, but we were able to salvage one mobile unit from Auburn Middle School. It was the one good unit, relatively new. And we got that moved down to Christiansburg High School, and we're setting that up. Uh, and that sh we were shooting for the end of this month for it to be ready. Uh, weather's been rough, but uh, we're still shooting for that. What will that be used for? Do we know yet? Uh, I think it's will be used for extra space for remediation, for pullouts, for getting ready for the SOL tests. Okay. That's one reason why Kevin wanted us to have it ready by the end of this month if we could. So, some of the smaller uh, PTA booster and other pro. Uh, projects. The third one down, I had taken off uh, last month because it had been on there so long and I didn't think it was going to happen, but it's back on there. The town of Christiansburg uh, had some extra time and they have a lot of equipment and uh, they want to make that field at old CMS more usable. We had put all the mobile units on it for when Blacksburg Middle was there and we took those away. Uh, well, when we did that, it made the field smaller. Parks and Rec uses that field extensively. And so the town is are taking the footings out and the pavement out, and they're going to put up uh, some new goalposts and uh, really make that go. Of course, we'll get the benefit. Uh, it's sort of a win-win. We'll get the benefit of it uh, for our P classes, for our special schools there. 
uh, Harding Avenue Safe Routes to School project. Uh, town awarded that and they're in process. Uh, the first thing they did was put up the safety fence. So if you go by there, you can see that. Not much else has started yet, but uh, contractors procuring materials and getting ready to go in a safe fashion. The last one that has some uh, progress is the installing the batting cages at the new BHS baseball softball area, uh, moving those from the old BHS. And they've got the, uh, last I heard they had the footings installed and they'll be moving those over soon as the weather clears. Finally, the disposition of the former school properties uh, this three updates uh, from the wording from the last report from the county administrator. Uh, town and county staff currently evaluating the next steps for the former BAC, BMS. The former BHS, the county's in discussion with an outside group. I think it's a, a sports group uh, in repayment for allowing them to use the fields there and the track. Uh, the, group is going to do upkeep on the fields and uh, for this season. And finally, former Price's Fork Elementary, uh, apparently they're in the last stages of discussing road improvements there on Price's Fork so that development can uh, finally be uh, approved. And that is it. Any questions? Yes, not, not a question. Uh, it's my understanding that you, you and your crew and other people were extremely busy this last week when there was no school. Am I correct? Yes, sir. And I'm not, and I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit. I want to hear exactly what took place in different schools that was emergencies that you had to respond to. Run those down for me, please. Uh, if you can remember them all. <laughs> okay, most of. Uh, at the beginning of the week, we we did uh, well in preparation for the cold. We did a lot of uh, getting the HVAC systems ready and tweaked uh, the control systems so the really cold, cold air wouldn't come in. And there are ways to do that, and it was pretty complicated. And we did that. Then there was the snow and ice removal. The what? The snow and ice removal. Right. And we do the parking lots with the facility staff, and, and the sidewalks with the custodians. We also coordinate with VDOT. A lot, a lot of that goes on, the, and the two towns. So we were ready for school, and VDOT couldn't clear the roads? The VDOT cleared a lot of the roads. What they couldn't get to, I think, mostly were the a bit of the secondary and the, right. the tertiary roads. Okay. And of course, our buses run on all of those, even uh, gravel roads. So there's just so many miles of those roads. VDOT did a great job, and the two towns did too. Okay. I'm, I'm not, and they helped us as what well. What else did you do? Uh, we had a f frozen coil, uh, heating coil over a uh, gifted resource room at uh, Auburn Elementary School. We had a pipe burst in the boiler room at Christiansburg Elementary School and flooded down into the old coal bin. And uh, tell me about Shawsville Middle School. Shawsville Middle School, uh, one of the things we had each of the cold days, even the weekends and the Code 4 day, the custodians go out and check their schools. And in the front, the custodian went there uh, yet yesterday morning? Day, day before. before. Day before. <laughs> and found water bubbling up at the edge right. of the road. And uh, two-inch water line, I believe, the original water line to the 1930s school had uh, had burst. Actually, the, the water line, a six-inch line, and then when they were fixing that, they accidentally hit a uh, two-inch line that went to the school. And we worked with uh, Montgomery County PSA, who uh, was responsible for doing that, but we worked side-by-side -side along with them. And it's my understanding that as you worked the line, it kept on bursting and bursting. Right. And yet, the point I'm making is, the next morning, school was still ready. Yes, sir. That was incredible. Yes, sir. Other, what other stuff? 
The, you the other amazing. one was already mentioned, the one at Christiansburg okay. Middle School. Yeah. That was the roughest one. <laughs> I, I just think the board needs to know how many hours you put in and the work you put in. I think it was wonderful that under the difficulties that you had, we were ready to open school mm -hmm. the next day. That's great, absolutely great. Our goal is f for us not to be the ones that are well, thank you. causing school thank not to open. Exactly. So it doesn't always work that way, but uh, it did this time. Great so, job. But it's the men and women that I work with, I just mm. watch what they do, really. So. <laughs> yeah, they're amazing, thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Dan. That's it for me. All right, board members. Next up is unfinished business. Any board member have any unfinished business that they would like to address? I do. I guess I'd like to mention um, the topics in the public address. One is, I guess, unfinished and one is news. Um, the unfinished has to do with the study hall issue at Blacksburg High School. I mentioned it a few <coughs> weeks ago. Um, and we um, received some information from Ms. Blackburn on our board update on January 30th, and I do appreciate that. I was wondering if um, you would mind, Ms. Blackburn, to um, explain, since we've had two speakers speak on this topic, and especially the Fairfax County um, document. Again, um, as you explained in the board update, the reasons um, we, that uh, you prefer not to implement this change in the school system. Ms. Blackman, before you address this, I want to say something about this. I, th I think we're bringing up a topic that's micromanaging. There, there's a system out there that works well. The system is we have an admiral of all of our fleet, and that's the superintendent. The, the, the other part of that system is we have captains of each boat, which is each high school, each middle school, each elementary school. And then we have the school board who steps back and oversees policy, hiring and firing, uh, budget, and so on. And I have a difficult time fitting this study hall situation into any of those areas. Personally, uh, Kevin's not here, but, but I don't really, I'm not really interested in the specifics of how Kevin runs Christiansburg High School. And I'm really not, really not interested in how Brian runs Blacksburg High School because it's his school and I want him to run it and he seems to be doing, as Kevin is, a phenomenal job. So my take on this is, Jamie, you don't need to answer this, but how interested are you in Blacksburg study hall program? My point is, I don't think this is a board issue. I think it's micromanaging. I think that if you folks want to work this out, you need, you need to sit down with a superintendent. We had an example a couple years ago where one of, the, one of the sports teams was having all kinds of difficulty. And the board, in its wisdom, stood back and let that thing go to the right administrators, and they worked it out. And I really feel very strongly about this situation right here. I just don't see where I have anything to say about this as far as a board member is concerned. It's micromanaging. I refuse to do that. Nonetheless, the question has been asked, so. Thank you. I, I would like to say you don't have to answer that question because I don't think that, that this board needs to hear it. But I'm one of the board members, Mr. Ivers, and I've asked the question. And, and it I'm is your opinion. Different. So yeah. the question has been asked, so without any further interruptions, let's let Ms. Blackburn answer. Okay. Well, I'm going to defer to place it on the agenda and make you a presentation regarding what is best practice in terms of working with students in our high school. I think it would be better for me to do that than for me to try to ad lib the information that's in the board update. So I'd be happy to do that if that is the desire of the board. Well, let me ask if it is the desire of the board. I would certainly like to see what's best for the students as well. We're here to advocate for them also. And not just at Blacksburg High School, but any school that might want to implement the study hall, if that's what works best for their children. 
Well, for me, even though I, I agree with what you're saying, uh, Mr. Ivers, I do think that sometimes we get into micromanaging and we don't need to. But on the other hand, when all the eighth period thing came up with Blacksburg, in the back of my mind, and I kind of backed up because I didn't think it was our place, I kind of thought to myself, there are half the students that don't want that and can't take those vigorous classes and don't want those vigorous schedules. And I have to say, you know, I do agree with that. And I do see that. I do hear from parents that also are kind of going, why do we have to fit this mold because a small group are pushing for it? So I hear and I agree, but I would like to see what's on the, the bank of that. I, I've been having mixed feelings like you, whether it's our job or it's not our job. But again, if it's a policy issue and if we are approving classes or courses, Again, if it needs to be taken as a course spot on the curriculum, then as a board, we have to approve some shape and form. So we have to hear, um, I think, Ms. Blackburn's point openly in public, and then we'll make our, our decision. But again, I had a very long and hard time to see it, whether it's our job to decide what is best for you know every school to implement and I didn't want to be in between, you know, whether it's a Mr. Kitts or um, Dr. Sears and Ms. Blackburn in that sense. But again, if it is a course approval issue, uh, I'm seeing it's um, study hall is taking a, if it is going to be on the list of classes that kids can sign up, we approve those classes. So if study hall is going to be on that green sheet that they will check, then we have to make a decision whether it needs to be there or not. So from that perspective, I think I would like to also hear what Ms. Blackburn is going to say. Anything additional, Sarah? No, I mean, I, I definitely would like to see in the presentation also some the pros and cons as to why we're getting this kind of feedback. And I'm sorry, what kind of feedback are you talking about? why we're saying that what they're asking for is not going to be implemented and it is so you want me to review the research material that I gave you in the board update right okay I'll be happy to review the research material yeah I think at this point it just please just provide the information to us and then we can decide I I, I do agree with Joe in the sense of micromanaging however you know, this is obviously an issue that we at least need to have some information on to see if we do need to become involved, which I'm not convinced of at this point. Anything else unfinished business-wise, board members? Okay, any new business? I think, Sarah, you had something there? Yes, um, the topic that was mentioned in public address, uh, the resolution um, that the um, uh, Education Association, the put kids first, I want to make sure I get this right, um, that uh, also was in our board update. Um, I think that that's a great idea to, if we want to, um, I, I believe that we should um, endorse this. At a, do we need to put it on a future meeting or can we um, do that now? There's an absolute, there's a resolution, so I'd like to, would prefer to bring it back to you at the okay. next meeting in the resolution format. Absolutely, I agree with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it does make, meet their timeline, I looked at that okay. before I didn't put it in there tonight. Okay. Any other new business board members? Announcements and information? Uh, yeah, um, yes. Um, the Christiansburg wrestling team did what? <laughs> what? Won the state championship again. That's right. 15, 14 <laughs> in a row. Yeah, they're good. Uh, did a wonderful <laughs> job. I'd also like to point out that three of Christiansburg wrestlers are all Americans on the, right now they're classified as all Americans on the Virginia Tech wrestling team, and um, if you get a chance to see them wrestle, it's just absolutely phenomenal. Wrestling, if you haven't seen it, is a very scientific sport. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of strength, endurance, know-how, but also science. 
and it's a wonderful sport. And um, Christensburg is developing some phenomenal people academically as That's what well. I was going to say, I can't yes. speak for the, the two young men, but Zach Epperly is a phenomenal young man. Yes, phenomenal. the three of them at, at Virginia Tech are all honor students, yes. as well as ranked nationally. Phenomenal stuff. Any other announcements or information? I would just like to publicly welcome Ms. Graham to our board. Thank you so much for taking us on and being a part of that. So we look forward to working with you in the coming months. Thank you. Upcoming board, school board meetings. You guys can see the schedule there. Uh, we have a meeting next Tuesday. And then the following Tuesday, we have um, our training. So if there are no questions there, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. So move. <clears throat> Excuse me. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? We're adjourned. <laughs> it's giving <Answer>. speech. <laughs>